Hello there, Drew Anish of Whiskey Lore. It's time for another whiskey tasting. Today I am in my home state of South Carolina and I am doing a tasting of a South Carolina whiskey, which is New Southern Revival Rye Whiskey made by High Wire Distilling Company of Charleston, South Carolina. Actually went down to the distillery to do a tour when I finally got around to my own home state to check out the distilleries and actually got a signature from the distiller. That's something that you may not think of doing when you're on a distillery tour and you're buying a bottle to leave with, but if the distiller's around, see if they'll sign it. What the heck? I mean, so this is batch number 18, bottle number 690. Interestingly enough, they were one of the first distilleries I went into that used a German still called a Karl still. Looks a little different from your normal pot still. It has some chrome and um, or stainless steel and copper on it. So very unique look and interesting shape. Um, let's talk a little bit about rye whiskey and southern rye whiskey. Now there is a common misconception that rye grows only in cold climates. It does not grow in warmer climates. This is not true. In fact, the rye that they are using here comes from the South. And a bruisey rye doesn't really sound like a name that you would expect to hear. There, there's how it's spelled. Not really what you expect to hear from a Southern um, type of grain. Why would it be called a bruzzi? That sounds Italian. Well, it's because it is a derivative of an Italian grain that was brought to Georgia back in 1953. And when it got here, they found that it actually was a great early winter cover crop and was perfect for feeding cattle, horses, and other livestock. So, this myth that rye does not grow in the South is incorrect. It can grow in the South. It's not always as reliable as corn in the South, but it definitely grows in the South because how did all of these Kentucky bourbon distillers and Tennessee bourbon distillers all of a sudden have rye in their mash bills? Obviously, they had some experience with rye in making whiskey in the past. So it's just really interesting to kind of dig into that and find out what the origin of that grain is. There's another distillery here in South Carolina in my hometown of Greenville that makes a heirloom South Carolina rye vodka. And we won't get into the whole thing about flavored vodkas, you know, or trying to Talk about a grain as an impact on flavor of, of vodka. Because to me, vodka is supposed to not have a flavor, but this one does. However, <laughs> I actually do like it. It's a it's a nice sipping vodka, and so I don't really sip vodka very often. But you know, sometimes maybe I should lighten up and say yes. There can be a purpose for a vodka that I just if I went into a store to buy vodka to make my Vesper martinis and it had a flavor that was going to conflict with the other ingredients that I'm putting in my martini, then it's not good. I don't want it. And so that's why I'm a Smirnoff guy. I just, Smirnoff is probably the purest uh, vodka out there. New York Times says so. And so, you know, funny for me to say that as much as I sometimes uh, uh, suggest the falsehoods that come out of the New York Times, um, due to, uh, my historical research, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's a thing. Anyway, so let's jump right in and do a nosing and tasting of New Southern Revival, the whiskey with a really long name. Ah, and this, this is what I was interested in finding out. This is supposed to be a very sweet rye in its natural form. But of course, in the whiskey, it's going to meet a barrel, and it's going to meet a distillation process. So there's a lot of different things that can have impact on a rye whiskey. And so, it's got a, it's got a nutty character to it. 
uh, coming from the oak. The rye is actually herbally. It has a bit of mint to it, which is really nice. But there's also an earthiness to it. It all kind of blends into this, and maybe this is coming from a mixture of the barrel and the rye, but it comes across as um, kind of a... Um, it's something that reminds you of being on the farm. That's all I can say. It's just something that reminds you of being on the farm. And it, it's like, like standing near a wood fence or something. I don't know. It has, has kind of that type of a, of a smell to it. But there's this nice little lingering sweetness over the top of it. And I can't put it down to being like a toffee smell or something like that. It just kind of rises over the top. Cheers. Mm. This is 45% ABV, but it is not aggressive at all for all those that think that rye is overly spicy. There's spice here, but it's really not the star of the show. It is really unique. I mean, it... On the palate, it's... it's it's one of those that you're probably going to have to like sit with and really kind of figure out what you're tasting there. I mean, I can get little hints of like cherry in there, which is interesting. Um, cinnamon, a little clove, a baking spice going on in this on the palate. And the rye is there, but it really kind of takes a back seat to what could even be described as tobacco notes coming in on the finish of this and it's just really pleasant and it leaves that nice um, minty kind of a uh, air around it which makes it a very pleasant drinking whiskey so I mean uh, I definitely think that this is uh, you know if, if we're gonna think uh, you know how does rye survive in the south and is it just gonna be a dried out grain and it's not gonna be very interesting be very one-dimensional I don't really see that at all, although it is much more fascinating on the nose than it is on the palate. What I'll say about the palate is that it is something that would be very easy drinking and flavorful enough, but something that either there's a complexity there that I'm just not able to break apart and figure out what the components of it are, or it's just coming in as kind of a generalized flavor that's a pleasant flavor, but doesn't really have any specific notes to it that I could really just, you know, pull out of it. So very interesting whiskey. And uh, I definitely put this on my good scale. I think it is, you know, worthy to try out. If you're down in Charleston, South Carolina, which is a wonderful place to visit, then uh, not in July. <laughs> I've been there in July. It's not good. Uh, if you, unless you like walking out into a what feels like a swimming pool but actually it's just you walking down the street uh with the humidity so high and the temperature just boiling i don't know how people deal with it down there other than the fact that they probably do the same thing i do and live in air conditioning in the summertime so anyway that is life how it goes hope you guys enjoyed this if you like the video please give me a like below and then if you uh learn something from it, you have some comments, any like thing like that, just go ahead and uh, leave your comments below and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos down the road. And until next time, cheers and slan goodbye. Hmm.